thing comes that you can lose one team fight in the late game, and that will cost you the entire game sometimes. And now we're already in the game number two. Now remember, Fnatic will be blue side the rest of this series, and they kick it off with a bard ban. Yeah, and just to explain it, uh, G2 at side selection, because they were the highest seed in game one, three, and five, and they picked blue side for game one, and then picked purple side for the last two games. Fnatic picked blue side in both their games two and four, and that's why Fnatic will now stay on the blue side for the remaining of tonight. And that's why there's a Lissandra ban from G2. Yes. Because G2 are like, well, we're going to take away one blind pick of, uh, you know, blue side. They may even take a second, depends on what they want to hit here. Uh, Lissandra is probably the most prominent pick in the mid lane for blind picking, so take that away. Uh, the other two bans coming out, Braum and Sivir now. We saw Sivir for Reckless in the last game do very well at controlling mid lane. And Braum, they're taken away from hybrid. Yeah, it looks like Fnatic wants to first pick an Alistar. But by having these two early support bands, you kind of tell G2 that is an option for you. And that means they can opt to maybe remove one of the, the last band they were supposed to, let's say, let's take an Echo as an example. And yep. actually, we don't have to ban it because now we put them up to the test here. Do you want the Echo? Do you want the Alistar? Just as two examples here, so uh, some new bans come. This is a really interesting ban. Lulu is statistically Perks' weakest performing champion, and they've banned it away. Do not want to allow G2 to have that. Interesting strategy. Now, the Nidalee was left open with the Kindred band away, and instantly Fnatic snapped that one up. Spirit has had some field days on that champion. So two things we saw here. Uh, first of all, G2 were more afraid of playing against Kindred than the Nidalee, so they banned that one away, knowing there's such a high chance the Nidalee would be first picked or the Kindred would have been first picked. They can still get a Graves now for Trick, so they don't actually have to take that early. I'm not expecting a top lane Graves from Gamsu coming in. And then suddenly Jiju can opt into either the Thresh they just played or take away that Alistar and kind of remove those bands. But Hybrid has not been a big Alistar player if you look at the entire split. No, he hasn't. And the thing is, you look at this first pick from Fnatic, Nidalee has an exceptionally strong early game and the way that she sets the game up for the rest of her team. The problem is it doesn't have the same impact that a Kindred has in a team fight. The same with the Graves. Graves has a little bit more reliable damage that comes out. Nidalee is still fairly strong. Though. Uh, of course, yeah, Nidalee is still fantastic. Very snowball focused. Yeah. Not the greatest team fighter compared to a Graves. Interesting that Hybrid still hasn't picked up the Alistar. Still doesn't value it very highly. So Fnatic can get away with banning his two main supports. Still get an Alistar for Cly. And Trick, oh sorry, and G2 takes a very early support pick, even though it's not even going to be that contested, in my opinion. I value Alistar much higher than Thresh in the current meta. But there's another option here. They could look to just pick the Trundle instead of the Thresh and flex it. Yes, you know sure. you've got mid lane counter pick at the minimum, so you have another rotation to lock top and support. You know that likely it's going to be a tank in the top lane, depending on what Fnatic want to run. But oh, oh, we have oh, gone back oh to his bread and butter. Line Z up the middle, and the Alistar, as you boys correctly predicted, locked in. Oh, if I'm Emperor, gotta watch my back on this one with that Lucian pickup. His favorite still might get popped a lot. Febovan made his name as a Zed player. It was Zed and Riven all the way back in Season 3 that Febovan was like, these are my champions in Challenger. I'm going to play these, I'm going to crush everybody on. Right, and, and especially his mid lane pick is important because Fnatic yeah. opted into blue side in their two games where they could select the side. So we had to see what was the blind pick options because, again, we look so much at this mid lane matchup. We know jungles are getting picked very early, so we're looking at a last pick mid laner in almost any game or every yeah. game where G2 is on purple side. And you now give Obviously, the chance for counter pick. Yeah, you give them not only the chance for counter pick, but Lissandra was banned. That's the best, pretty much, counter pick against Zed. It nullifies what he wants to do. There's also, uh, you know, no ability now for G2 to go Azir because Zed is a good matchup into it as well. There are a few mid lane picks for Perks to look for now. We have to see where he dips in his champion pool. Yeah, the last pick coming up for him there. Reckless <laughs> inside, <laughs> grabbing the. <laughs> Grabbing the Ezreal and uh, the Echo goes over in favor of Gamsu and uh, I think you could go rise. That one? I think you could go rise here if it's something they play. Obviously, being mm. played a lot in the LCK, and it still hasn't really made that big of an impact in Europe. It was banned against Unicorns of Love. Saw it in NA last night. But we might also just see again even more focus on the double globals. TF has always been one of these weird picks that doesn't really win lane against anything, but you can run defensive summoners and still have a global, so you can try and survive that all in coming from Assassins. <laughs> oh, oh he there it is. There we it. go. All right, first rise we get to see in EU, this side of the re, uh, some of the changes and just getting more popular. I mean, so th what happened to Ryze in this patch was he actually got a nerf to his passive, but he got a pretty big buff to his ulti. The cooldown got reduced by 20, 30 seconds, 
So it's a lot more playing around this insane mobility he gets when he pops, pops his ulti. And he's so, so powerful still in the late game. Yes, you're okay, your, your passive only stacks up to five, but you only use five spells with your passive <laughs> and then it's gone. So it's a lot more about playing around that. And then again, having that extra mobility, you can build, you will build Rod of Ages, you will go tier. Strength of the Ages, we have seen over in Korea for even more stacking HP as an option. No teleport so far selected because it's into a Z. Yes, uh, also it will change at the end of uh, Champion Select. There is a slight bug in Spectator that <laughs> it changes right at the last second. So unfortunately, we'll keep you updated on that as we go in. Uh, I know a lot of people get baited by that. We didn't talk too much about some of the other picks that got locked in. Fnatic looking to have Reckless on a scaling champion at Ezreal. We've seen it time and time again from them. That's yeah. supplemented now with the earlier game damage that Zed is going to provide in this situation. And they bring some AP out of the top lane with Echo. So it's a little bit more well-rounded than you might expect by having a lot of AD stacking coming from uh, that uh, mid and AD carry. Oh, and yes, indeed. And this is going to be one hell of a matchup, especially keeping an eye on that mid lane. Now, if you guys think Fnatic will answer back and make it a 1-2-1 in this series, hashtag Fnatic win. Or if you think G2 will continue steamrolling through, hashtag G2 win. We're going to load up and find out how this one all shakes out as we leave it all out on the rift. I'm excited to see this Rise VZ, boys. How about you guys? Oh, yes. Um, Feather and Z is something that we love to talk about, but very rarely see. Haven't seen it yet, this split. So uh, we get to finally see how it goes. And Perks, you know, definitely the heir apparent for this mid lane top tier player, and he's been very outspoken about his opinions on the subject. Febivan, of course, being that title holder last year, maybe not without a doubt, <laughs> you mid laners all over the place. I think it's safe to say in the end, Febivan, <laughs> yeah. 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 He stole the crown. And uh, obviously, we, at IEM, we did see him pick out the Z, but in the LCS, as you said, yep. stress, he hasn't played it, but IEM. The big yeah. tournament, you know, when it really matters, the oh. Z comes out for Febivan. He's all. Should we call the main pick, or should we give that to the Riven if we yeah, go way back? That, that's with the him? thing is, how far back do you go on? Yeah, it's even in the name. It's in the name. For him. <laughs> yeah. Well, we know where the crowd's going on this one, that's for sure. Uh, Febivin, very confident to pick this one up in a second rotation, blind. Yeah. And let's just talk about the comps, because we don't even see an assassin like Zed very often but he still fits into the one 3 one setup. Of course, he goes to a side lane, but it's different compared to when you run double teleport. When you run double teleport, you want to keep your three members around the mid lane, the AD carry support jungler as much as possible, and then use these teleports to kind of push in side lanes, then either opt into a dive or TP away and force a fight in numbers advantage. With the Zed, you want to play around the Zed lane. Yeah. When he goes to the side lane, he gets the kill pressure. That means he will be the first man to always get to the waves and push them in. Because you have to respect him, you have to sit pretty far back. And then suddenly jungle, support, they move up to the same lane, you either dive that lane and get a kill with the Zed, or the Zed moves into the shadows. He hides in there, you never know if he's diving mid lane, if he's going back to the Baron or Dragon or Rift Hill, and he just gives you river control by having the kill lane. I want to see though perks once he gets fully stacked on this rise. In those 1v1s, get to QSS. I think the Zed is going to jump in, and he's going to turn around and just going to smack him. Might be. Uh, Perks, running the mastery is a little bit more damage heavy, but we'll talk about that in a minute, because Ooh, Kick wow. is, is forced to quick flash. Talk about these Australia lanes. It's already going to be a different kind of game than we saw last time around. But Kick is down one summoner spell as Gamsu takes a bat to the head here, or takes a bat to Kick his head, I should say, with the time winder coming in. After the phase dive, it is answered back with the buckler. Gamsu got that early level two and then went straight for another trade against Kikis and obviously forced the flash from him. But as you said, Pyro, we do have to stand a lane just on top side, the 2v2. Emperor and Hybrid are looking for that 2v2 at all times. Fnatic were the team looking for a lane swap. When you have this Thresh, you need to get these 2v2s, you need to win them. Ooh, Spirit, a little bit low here, instantly flashing and Spirit's gonna back off knowing he did his job. There's something I wanted to keep an eye on for sure. How much does this jungle matchup come into effect to deal with these mid laners? So far, Trick hasn't shown face in that mid, but Spirit with a quick one. 
No, I mean, Trick and Perks generally have kind of got this agreement where Trick's like, well, I'm not really going to camp you, but just make sure you don't die. And I'll Perks recall in your bush. Exactly. It's just like, eh, they're around. I'll just sit here, but it's okay. I'll ward for you. But I don't actually want to appear in your lane. I want to focus so much more on how to control my jungle, how to control the vision around it. The problem is controlling your jungle against a Nidalee can be difficult. But one thing that G2 have in their favor is the fact that we're in, uh, you know, the upside down Australia lanes. The Lucian and the Thresh are going to be able to constantly have pressure on the Ezreal and the Alistair. You're not going to kill them, but you're always going to be able to push them back towards their tower. So that makes Nidalee invading in the top side that little bit more difficult. It's already reflected a little bit in that farm. Let's go back to the bottom side where they just keep batting each other. Uh, Gamsu this time takes a little bit more than he gives. Kikis dodging out the Time Winder. Another shot from the hammer. Still continuing to trade back and forth, but Gamsu does have that summoner spell advantage. Two of them, in fact, if you count the teleport. Yeah, pretty uh, classic early trading between tanks. Not a whole lot of action. I mean, okay, there's action, they're fighting, <laughs> but it's, it's not going as fast, you know, as maybe we've been used to. In I the mean, past. last last game, Deficio, I know you, you got your hopes up there. This time it's going to be a little different, I think. Like well, yeah, with the standard lanes, we obviously will have a bit more action early on, especially uh, now we have. A very aggressive jungle pick for Spirit. He wants to really snowball on his Nidalee here, where the Graves is fine scaling up to late game. And now, because we have this winning 2v2 lane for G2, in order to really utilize it, they actually have to win the mid lane as well. Because then you open up for perks to roam to that top lane. 4v2 dive, and now we only have a teleport on the bottom side of the map for the top laners. Otherwise, it's only the jungler who can join, and then the 3v2 dive can be a bit risky. Spirit is also on the top side here. So we need to see if Perks can control that mid lane and then come up here. Fly getting hooked in. He is. Trick is already showing face. There is the Spear connecting, and Hybrid knows that he can't go any deeper than that. Spirit just hanging out and doing some moral support to Reckless and Cly as they try to catch back up in the farm game. So Fnatic still very even, and this one is, of course, an early game, and we have the standard lanes, so really don't expect much to change. But G2, uh, as they were hyper-aggressive coming into the series, we have seen a different side of them today. Does it continue? Well, uh, I feel like it's always in their blood to be uh, somewhat <laughs> aggressive. I don't think G2 are ever going to let that fire die out. They're always like, well, we can pick a team fight. Uh, we can pick a comp that can team fight. Let's just, let's just pick something. Nice that to we have can the option. It. Yeah, it's always <laughs> nice to have the option. And uh, certainly, Trick, as we spoke about, him supplementing damage is kind of along that same route. It likes to you know, provide a lot when it comes to taking kills, isn't so yeah. great at, uh, well, I'll set him up and you knock him down. And obviously also for Fnatic now, when they play the Zed, scaling is never really in Zed's advan advantage because items like QSS will mess him up later on in the game. Hourglass, obviously. Trick is finding Spirit, or maybe Spirit is finding Trick. Somebody's finding somebody. Spirit's trying to find a ward, but he's not seeing one right now. Febivin realizing Trick is going to have Perks back here and it gets put in Rune Prison. Look at it, already starting to machine Man. gun out. Febivin's so low. Ooh. The back. Oh, oh, that was... Just shy of first blood. Ooh, there was wow. a potion there for Febivin taking. <laughs> I'm not sure if that saved his life or not, but we get to see this focus from Trick around mid lane. And again, it's because if G2 can take over mid lane, it just opens up for diving that top lane. And then suddenly you can snowball the game. And of course you want to have that rise scaling up. He's the man who's gonna hold the side lane against the Zed anyway. And in that situation, realistically, Feverman didn't have a whole lot of options. The exhaust still is there for Perks. Bottom lane, this fight could be culminating. Yeah, Kekis could be going down here. Gamsu with the solo play for first blood manages to grab Kekis and burn everything in the pot. Process. Well, <laughs> those fights take a long time, but Gamsu had the damage in the end of it. Kikis, you know, he thought he was okay for a while, but after just that damage starts to mount up from Gamsu, he got the ultimate damage because it was prolonged on the spot. And Gamsu manages to really stamp himself against Kikis. And just to very quickly go back to that mid lane, the potion saved Febrin's <laughs> life. He was down to seven HP, and he popped the potion just a few seconds before. So remember that at home, when you are fighting, just flick that potion, it can save your life. Never save. And I guess because of it, Kick is tilted completely and he died <laughs> in the 1v1 and we are now completely making up some That's, stuff. Yeah, and now the, game the game is snowballing out of control. Yeah, no, this is, this is going nuts already for Fnatic. <laughs> now, 500 gold down, of course, because G2 did grab that tower. Let's take a look at what happened again in this bottom side. It was a lot of run around, but then Gamsu got the better. Yeah, Gamsu got the better. Again, Parallel Convergence is such a long stun that Kikis and the clone 
of uh, Echo managed to just stand on the same spot for a super long time. The ult damage comes out, and I guess uh, Emperor is hiding. Be rewarded. Whoa, the big knock up and an instant exhaust, but Reckless already took a whole chunk of damage, and now Cly is getting answered back. So Kikis was trying to get some revenge up in that top side. They swapped the top in support. There's only one team in Europe who would have their <laughs> jungler hiding in a bush for a bit of a random gank and seem they could surprise the enemy team, and that's G2. They got an exhaust, got a heal as well from Reckless, and now Emperor had to recall a lot later, obviously. So Trick has gone down to the bottom lane, and now will be joined by Emperor a little bit later. Fnatic will get a push on top side and will force Kickers off because they have their jungler show up as well. And right now, G2 is actually behind in the play, so that was a very, very risky play, honestly, by G2 because, again, now they are behind in this push. You can see on the bottom side, this Echo is able to clear out most of the wave. And Fnatic is already on top, and this is all because Lucian stayed top lane to try and get a kill. We have seen this happen before. In the past, G2, some of the few games they have dropped, making unnecessarily risky plays as Gamsu phase dives out of the death sentence. Meanwhile, Kickus and Trick are up in the top, low, and the minions all away while they try to peck away at that turret, get some chip damage on it. And with their Febberman pushing in mid, he can also roam up and just Stay near the team, make sure they can get onto the tower. Gamsu jumping. Minion wave is gone. G2 again is very delayed on the bottom side. Top lane right now. Tower is almost down. They have three members around it. And again, remember, this Zed can always move to join the fight as well. And this is what G2 have had to do here to get Kikis out of that bad matchup for himself bot lane. It was really not... Oh, flash top! Yeah, they're gonna get Trick knocked in, but he is able to get under tower, but it's not safe enough. Spirit claims the kill in that, and Kikis is surrounded by Fnatic members. Reckless with the kill. Spirit running just out of range. They're gonna trade tower, but Fnatic with a massive power play up in the top lane. And again, we have to go back to Emperor hiding in that bush, being very late. On the bottom lane, when Fnatic had swapped Reckless and Clyde to the top side, they were obviously looking to trade towers. They were just so much faster. And with an Alistar hitting level 6, like, we can get more than just the tower. <laughs> or you want oh, to defend yeah. with two members? Fine, we're gonna dive you. Very easy setup from Fnatic and very well executed here. Clyde going in, obviously the man tanking. Pops the ulti, TP in as well, and even the Zed was on its way. Guaranteed kills. Yeah, easy, easy kills. Guaranteed turret that comes from it. Okay, it wasn't as at the same time, but it's fine. You get two kills, you push the next wave in, you get the turret. Great for Fnatic. But G2, on the other hand, they did get the bottom side. But the problem is Kikis is, is still down on farm, and he's realistically never going to be in a situation to go up against Gamsu in a, an even setting here. And now they got a kill onto Reckless. They've allowed Reckless to be relevant in this game a little bit faster than he should be. And Perks, although he nearly solo killed for Bivin, it was a nearly. It's a, a, a big difference. They also now had a Graves ult helping him yeah. solo kill. Well, well, that's true. It wasn't quite solo. <laughs> but but what I mean to take away from that is that didn't assist Perks on how quickly he gets right the game. Right? Is it didn't now punish Febberman in that situation. And he's going all in. And yep, goes for Perks, but realizes the error of his ways. Fortunately, he's got Klein Reckless to back him up. And Perks is stuck under turret, but no one wants to get anywhere near Rune Prison. So Emperor pushing down on the bottom side a little bit by himself. They're safe for the moment. Dragon does get secured by G2. They continue to grab the least contested objective, staying down 1,000 gold at 12 minutes into this game. But Fnatic still with the pressure play up at the top side, end of mid. Yeah, another rotation G2 expected because they actually left the lane that was already being pushed in. They didn't even push it out first here on the bottom side and then walk to mid lane. They just kind of abandoned it. Like, all right, we're done here. Perks being jumped. Oh, he's not being killed. Oh, got a flash away from it, though. But meanwhile, while Fnatic sent three in mid, only Febivin on the bottom. They lose a second tier turret here. Gamsu was hanging around in the wings, but they're not getting anything off this. Again, that's why it was a bit of an odd rotation for Fnatic, just leaving that bottom lane. Obviously, the Zed cannot defend on its own, but they traded for mid tower. Once again, jumped perks. Had to flash away, and Fnatic are really looking to speed up this game because they know they have the Zed and they want to get him to the side lane. But it's a place, it's, you know, characteristic that Fnatic have now showed us in multiple games in the playoffs alone, is that they want to get Reckless into mid lane as early as possible. Yeah. And G2 just showed us a way to punish it. It's by stacking down in the bottom side and take the tower. They traded mid out in exchange. This was the, uh, you know, attempt onto Perks to uh, kill him. Flash comes through, Perks gets himself away at first. Gamsu wants to go and uh, ultimately nothing came up. And the reason Perks steps up here to very early try and clear out the wave is he knows that if the wave gets to push into his tower, 
then he won't be able to wave play it properly as a rise because then three man is going to be around him. There's an Alistar who doesn't care about your tower and he wouldn't be able to do much. But if Nidalee hadn't been mid lane at that very moment, he could probably cleared out the entire wave just against the Ezreal and Alistar. Therefore, delayed Fnatic from ever pushing mid, allowing them to take bot tower and then rotate to mid, defending that tower. But obviously, because Spirit was already there, Perks gets forced away, has to flash as well, and loses tower. Look at the discipline, though, when it comes to vision control that Fnatic have seemingly ingrained upon themselves. They got some pink set on the map. They got four. They're even aligned officio, looking nice and neat in the inventory. <laughs> All about that vision control. Teleport coming out. Buys him anything. Gomsu having to burn flash after he chrono breaks. It's under away the tower from though. Perks. Oh, there's so many G2 members here. Gomsu, his days might be numbered. Surrounded by everybody, and Trick grabs him, and that's just gonna be it. So first kill for G2 Esports. They take the long route there, and now Febivin up top on a bit of a mission with some minions leading them right into the uh, into the tower. Yeah, well, no one is defending right now because G2 invested everything on the bottom side. Bit of a follow-up play from them getting that tower, getting the deep vision in the jungle. Like, is anyone going to show up here? Okay, there's one. We're going to go kill you. But obviously because Fnatic are pushing on top side, getting a lot of damage here from Febivin won't be able to will you now because now two guys are coming in towards him now. Oh, he has, the farm. has to play it safe. You know, doesn't want to risk his life to try and take down a tower. Fnatic will, however, be able to secure the Rift Herald up on the top side. They did have a lot of vision invested in that one. Ah. And they ruined the pinks. perfect I line. I know, right? God, buying they it in. basically lost. It. Ruined. Yeah. Basically lost the game. Completely ruined. <laughs> uh, tower in mid. All right, this is. They're gonna try and save this one. G3 Ooh, instantly bailing out, but are they? Because Clive knocks Hybrid back on into that. Look at that big old true shot. Febivin on a hunt, looking for Trick, and he manages to take him down. Hybrid's gonna fall as well, and they just turn up the pressure. Emperor trying to be the hero. He does manage to grab Cly on the back of that one, but will he stay alive? Kick is with the wind up. Does he get the knock in? No. Spirit. Flashing forward, auto attack, gets a double. That's four members of G2 Esports down. And now Kikis is on the run. They won't find him, but they have the moves to keep on pushing. Absolutely fantastic team fight from Fnatic. There was no teleport for Kikis, so he wasn't even close to the fight. You get a perfect engage in with Fly first. Remember this Rise is still trying to scale up. He's not really at a point yet where he wants to fight. And suddenly G2 gets caught in a 4v5. Caught in a 4v5, Gamsu wants to see if Kikis is uh, caught in a feeling up in this top lane right now, feeling like he wants to fight but has to back away. So let's go all the way back to the beginning of this setup. This is Perks diving between two towers to try and set this fight up. Yeah, that's passive gone, that's ulti gone, and now again the 4v5. Kikis is running from the top lane, but he's way too late. Fibrin secures the kill in the back line. Perks is not really able to do anything. You have to play around these cooldowns with the new Rise a lot. You need that passive, and once you've used the entire passive here, you have to then kind of kite around a little bit until you re-enter the fight. Obviously not an option when you're being jumped on. Finally, the tower will fall in the middle of Tier 1, but G2 have already experienced a pretty hefty setback there. 3k gold down in the hole, and we're 16 minutes into this game. That's their fourth tower, so they do have a lead in that department, but they need to start pressuring. I like one adaptation, though, that Fnatic made with regards to who got the Rift Herald buff. Very rarely do you see it go to a mid laner, but on somebody like Zed who wants to be in a side lane, it's actually a fine choice, a, a good choice, in fact. And Fnatic have now gone up to the top side to hold on to this inner tower. They have enough wave clear there with the Echo, with uh, the rest of the members to uh, deter G2. It's just such a problem now that Febriven is extremely far ahead on farm. He got to that side lane very quickly. Again, that's why they made that move, swapping yep. in the Ezreal to mid and actually gave up a bot lane tier two tower just to get Febriven down in that lane as fast as possible so you could just freely push it out. Massive CS difference between him and Perks. Rod of Age is just completed now, 17 minutes in for this rise. So at 27 minutes, it's gonna be fully stacked. Perks cannot hold Febivan right now in these 1v1s. He can maybe run away if he pops the exhaust, but that's about it. And that's the nature of the game. Febivan, too slippery to get caught. He may not be able to get the 1v1 on, and Perks trying to hunt him down, but there is just nothing doing there. The next dragon will be up and at him in about five seconds. G2. Really not in a position to try and contest this one. It would just be the first for Fnatic and probably not worth, especially with so many scattered members across the map. Yeah, right now as G2, you try and slow down the game a little bit. You're not opting into any more fights. It was the push on mid lane without a teleport top laner. It's, it's one of these macro mistakes we don't see very often anymore, where team is basically saying, we actually don't have teleports right now, but we were still trying to go aggressive towards an enemy tower. 
it's normally very easy to call, oh wait guys, we can't because we're pushing in. But they clearly expected to just get that tower down and then manage to run away after Perks tried to make their play between towers. And then get completely caught out. So it looks very silly right after. <laughs> It's like, guys, what if we try this? Like, you have no teleport. Why are you pushing in mid lane? You're going to get caught out. And obviously, Fnatic capitalized on it. And D2 are behind. Perks trying to get towards some armor here. Trying to get that hourglass. But it's going to take time. It's a very expensive item. Very expensive. And the roles have somewhat been reversed now in this matchup. We were talking in the last matchup how, you know, uh, Fnatic with the Cassid in were looking to scale and then they got caught out in one team fight they maybe shouldn't have taken. G2 have taken a, a fight there that they shouldn't have taken. It's kind of the yeah. same, but at a different point in the game. This one is far less game ending impactful than in game one, but certainly uh, the same kind of flavor is there of game two of this series. Uh, that's another question we had to Ooh. ask is Emperor takes a big javelin right in the back. Fnatic, they've clearly played a lot more series. Even this iteration of Fnatic have played a lot more. IEM, they got so much valuable experience. And Fnatic as a team, as an organization, they have all that infrastructure to help prepare and to help teams adjust on the fly in these best of series. And you start to see slightly different things. This is G2's first best of since qualifying for the LCS. I do like what G2 have brought, though, in this best of five so far. Uh, I like the game one picks and bans that they brought, uh, trying to punish a little bit of, of what uh, Fnatic was trying to do and ultimately got a great fight and ended the game. Uh, there have been a few moves with regards to how they tried to punish Fnatic's early swap where this is something that clearly G2 have looked at and have, got, have said, Fnatic do this, how we counter with it is by pushing that bottom lane in and we get the bottom in a turret and we trade the mid outer. So there are certain things that you can see G2 have prepared that they're doing very specifically for this best of fun. Yeah, also around the support picks, yeah. obviously double range support for Hybrid and trying to get that 2v2 lane going for G2 and obviously they won the laning phase. If you look at the top side of the map, where we had the 2v2 but they then lost on the bottom side, kick is against Gum, so this Echo here, a pick that was extremely strong yesterday, picked in all five games, obviously across the world it's been picked and banned in almost every single game right now and it is one of these picks where you have to consider banning it because yeah. I feel like he has a little bit of extra power compared to some of the other top lane picks because he, does, he, he deals more damage and he's still as tanky as most of these other picks. Obviously not as tanky as like say, say a Maokai because he has the damage mm -hmm. reduction as well but also just the fact that you can sit in the back line, AD carry can't kill you and you have enough damage to kill him. But now we have to beg the question of we're in the same side selection for the rest of this series. What is most impactful here? Is it the Echo coming out from Gamsu? Is it the Nidalee coming from Spirit? Because unless you want to drop both the Sivir, the Lissandra, and the Kindred out of your bands, one of these two at least has to get through. So it's on G2 to find the solution to this problem over the next couple of games. It is a best of five. It's not the end of the world if they lose a game once because of it, but if it starts happening and keeps being a problem, then you have to really adjust. And what's begun right here is Perks. Taking a little bit of damage from Feb. The death mark wasn't able to proc for too much and even burn the ignite on this one, but Kick is now being chased down once again by Gamsu, who's just having a field day now on this Echo 2, 1, and 3. Not a bad start to it at all. Spirit taking damage from Trick, getting knocked back up, but Hybrid's there to defend. Unbreakable will onto Cly as they try to turn it around. Teleport's coming in, but Reckless has already joined. The blowback was there, and that's a true shot for Raj coming out. Trick going very low. Hybrid already out, and boom goes the hammer. They've knocked him back, and G2 in full retreat from this one. Spears not connecting, but they don't even need it. Emperor going down, the double kill for Reckless as Trick is knocked out of the park. And now Fnatic, all five members roving together, grab themselves three for zero. Fnatic just feels so much more comfortable playing this kind of style where there's only one TP. G2 of caught sleeping a couple of times in these fights. Perks never really got himself to there. He doesn't have the TP. He's running the exhaust. It gives Fnatic such a good fight onto a couple of little, uh, you know, pickups at first. Then it transitions. In goes Kickus. Yep, trying to play the hero, but he's not going to be able to do it. Claw even stays alive. Perks knows he can't fight this one. Hybrid trying to save it, but that's not happening. Spirit right with the smite and they get themselves out of there. Another kill right on top. And again, just looking at this entire game, you just said it yourself, the Z pick obviously means no teleport. It also means now there's not really any crazy flanks happening between the two teams. We get a very standard teleport coming in in the middle of it, but Kikis is kind of realizing his team is already dead by the time he arrives. And obviously with this Z, because Z can go to that side lane and has kill pressure, we see how far back perks are playing. And this is what we talked about, if you go way back, 
The way to play with these 1-3-1 one, one comps with kill lanes like a Zed is by constantly playing around that lane. So when Zed is moving to a lane, you see the rest of Fnatic are there. So the jump perks, he's forced back, and then suddenly g like trying to run in and, and save him a bit later, <laughs> and gets caught out, and suddenly the fight is on. I've got to give Gamsu some, some props in that fight. Something I didn't catch the first time and just caught it at the end of that replay. He actually placed Parallel Convergence right where Trick's standing here, even though he was going aggressive, uh, you know, a half a screen, three quarters of a screen's length away. And what that did was Perk saw the parallel convergence and had to think twice about, do I cross through that? Because if he steps in that and Gamsu appears, instantly he's stunned, he gets caught out, he dies. And Perk's got zoned away from coming down into the fight to deliver his damage, all on Gamsu zoning him away, despite him not being the primary focus of that fight. Gamsu definitely stepping up on this Echo over the course of a couple of games right now. 1500 is the Baron power play. Dragon is going to be live, but Fnatic, they're the ones with the pressure across the map. Should be able to grab this tower easy peasy. That will be number five for them. And they just keep on marching through the bases. They don't even need to take any more neutral objectives or really anything else. They can just keep them at bay with this Baron. Yeah, you can just go top lane now if you want. Catch that wave, get the last outer turret down for Fnatic. Because obviously if we look at G2, you're sitting back at your own inhib trying to defend. You can't really react as fast. And now Fnatic on top. The perk should not be here. Oh, and he gets pinballed right back in. True shot Barrage not going to connect on him. And his tank is he's trying to hang on. Will it be enough? He does get yanked back. The turret will go down. And at the end of the day, that's all Fnatic really wanted. But meanwhile, Febivin on the bottom is going to even add to it. And Daylor, though he doesn't show, it has to be smiling on the inside for this game so far. Man, this is a much more old school style out of Fnatic. This is not, you know, tip top double TP meta that we've seen so much. And you can see how Fnatic are just ripping G2 across the map and forcing them to overextend. You very rarely see these kind of setups in uh, the current meta. And you can see instantly Perk steps too far forward. You mentioned that he shouldn't be there. He can't really effectively wave clear against this Baron buff, and he gets instantly picked up by Fnatic. They rotate up to the top and punish. Towers are getting totaled. They've got the bot. They've got the mid. Kikis is chasing down on Febivin. But meanwhile, the base is just in tatters. Gamsu still working at that top side, worrying at the minion wave. And the rest of G2, they're scattered, just trying to defend this. Massive Baron, po Baron power play here from Fnatic. 5k gold. Febivin jumps away. <laughs> hey, he's out of there. And really, you talked about this stress, you know, looking at their pick and ban phase, purple side every single game now for G2. The Zed became a much bigger problem because obviously, one, you couldn't run teleport on the rise. Mm -hmm. So he was the, going to be the man still sitting inside lanes against the Zed. But obviously, Rise is a very slow scaling champion compared to a Zed who wants to have mid game impact. And then with G2, obviously, losing that 1v1 as well. If you look at the top laners, Echo getting far ahead of this. Poppy, there are some key picks they have to look at and say, like, do we have to maybe ban away an Echo? Do we have to ban a Zed if we don't really have an answer? Yeah, I mean, this is going to sound quite of a, a quite far a reach, but we both chuckled in picks and bans when Hybrid hovered Talon. Now, I only say that because ah. it's an old counter to Zed, and that is the one way when I you had a silence. Wh yeah, when oh, that's true, when he had a silence. Thank you. I forgot that got taken away. What I was going to say, however, though, maybe is they need to look for a pick that isn't such a scaler on perks, because it kind of nullifies a lot of his potential uh, in this game, and it doesn't sure. specifically have to be a Talon, but certainly they need to look for other options. The problem is, if, if you look at other, you know, assassins, you can maybe pick into it. LeBlanc was never a good matchup into nope. Zed. Uh, Ari has been nerfed, was the go-to pick for a lot of mid laners before. Get early arm guards and then play Ari into it and you just charm behind you and set ultis you. But she's been nerfed, yep. obviously, and is no longer as strong, not really in the meta. And it means the Zed blind pick was a smart one for Fnatic. Also to, I think actually they wanted to say, we want to see what you're going to play into this. Perks, man. Jumping forward. He's still trying to make it work. <laughs> uh, not going to be able to find anything off of that one, but the teleport comes in. Fnatic instantly react, and in goes Fabivin looking for Perks, and he's out of there as Emperor had half his damage already dealt. And Spirit, reckless though, getting the kill on that one, still finding even more, forcing them right back under tower. That's going to be inhibitor number one. They turn for number two, the full course meal for Fnatic, and it's 28 minutes into this game. They're looking to try and close it out. All from Perk's Flash. If they can, Kekis gets the big knockup, staying alive, but for how long is that going to be? Still taking out the inhibitor, and Trek trying to tank up the damage, but not enough. Gamsu flashing forward, Reckless securing that kill. 
apply. He's going down on that one. That will give a kill over to Emperor. Is this enough for G2 to hang on for dear life? Spirit right back out of the tower range and Gamsu on the retreat path. That's going to be a 1 for 1. But this base just keeps getting wrecked. Yeah, two inips down, Baron spawning. About a minute's time as well for Fnatic if they want to play it really safe. You know, <laughs> you start setting up for that Baron, you force a team fight around it, you win that team fight, and then you close it out. Perks is trying to get his frozen heart. At this point, his scaling is still fantastic, but he's just so far off where he can really become a massive carry. This blue pill is real, sitting on four items right now. I see the fight again. It's actually Perks flashing forward. Yeah. Doesn't get the snare on Reckless. And the thing now is, now that he has no flash, it means they have to consistently run back. There's no real danger of Perks turning to engage in any situation here. It's only when Featherman steps up, and Perks still keeps going back. He's still running away because he can never escape if massive crowd control hits him. And this is like the third fight in a row that we've seen Kekis just out of position far enough to where he has to either back or try for the slow flank. And he can't get involved in that. You can see him trying to defend here, but it's already too late because they've already lost one. And then he nearly gets blown up. Yeah, this stays alive in the end. Trick. Same can be said for him. And then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. But Fnatic were not able to finish the game just yet. Once we get out of this replay, we should be able to see if they're just setting up with that Baron. We talked about five more seconds. Set up for a death brush. The great life of the Baron. Spawn, get killed. Oh, there's a sneaky little ward placed just outside by G2. So they will be able to see Fnatic move into the pit and start it. And they honestly have to just go for an all-in fight here. And yeah. you have to win this fight, get that Baron, and that's your only way in Kikis TV Teleport. is channeling. They're going to immediately peel off that one. Seeing it come out there, and Kikis just running right around the side with the home guards on. Trying to go. Febbiman's caught in the back, but he's going to instantly go on to Perks. Now Hybrid, a little bit low with the box on. True shot Barrage, set him up and knock him down. Gamsu, though, getting the kill credit on that one. Now Trick, he's taken out. That's a double kill. Baseball bat with Echo. Now Cly pinned against the wall by Kikis. He's going to get answered back. Febbiman leading out very low in this one. But meanwhile, Super Minions are still knocking on the base. They get the TP from Kikis. They drag G2 into a fight. And now there's no real response available to stop Fnatic from doing this, Baron. And they've been in full control ever since the early set of fights. The only real moves that we saw G2 having was that attempt at a kill from Perks. And, you know, G2 pushing the bottom side for that tower. But after that, it's been all about Fnatic. Yeah, simply some mistakes and problems for G2 in the early game. We talked about Kick is dying 1v1 against the Echo. And then, of course, that move in the mid lane where they had no teleport on the pop in. They went to push in this mid tower. And suddenly Fnatic, Fnatic collapses, gets multiple kills really far ahead in this game. And no response to the side lanes, really. This is again what G2 had to do. You just kind of surrender your base for now and just try an all in for a fight. Pipren uses ulti, mainly actually to stay alive here. Flashes out in the very end, and the rest of Fnatic are able to clean up. And, and we need to see now in this pick and ban phase. One, can Kikis <laughs> play Echo? Yeah, because has that has to be the first rotation for G2. If the Nidalee is the first pick again from Fnatic, if he cannot play it, you have to ban it. Yeah, absolutely. And surely after three weeks, and Echo's been in the meta for two or at least of the three weeks when you look at LCK and other regions. I mean, it's, it, that's a big question. We're going to have to see if it's answered. Uh, I, ooh, there's going to be another fight. Wind up and the pitch. It is going to just be one knocked out of this one. And the last inhibitor will fall. We're just shy of 32 minutes, but Fnatic looking to close it out and make this one an incredibly clean game on the board from them. 15 to 4 in kills. A humongous lead as Emperor tries to call the single minion Cly looking for the end on that one hybrid Emperor everyone's just blowing up here kick is trying to knock them all down spirit though will get his Zanyas on and it's just the Nexus now Fnatic can close this one out anytime they want Chrono break back Gamsu still dealing damage but it does